friends. Today I'm going to show you how to use the distributive property to solve a multiplication problem. This is really helpful, especially when you get into larger numbers, like I have 7 times 9. Now, a good tip for you is to try to break apart the biggest number that you have. So my largest number is the 9. So I'm going to circle that. I'm going to break my 9 into two pieces to make this problem a little easier to do. When I break it into two pieces, you need to remember that the two pieces that you break it into have to still equal 9 when you add them back together. So 5s are super easy for us, so I'm going to break this into a 5 and a 4. 5 plus 4 still equals 9, okay? Now, the part that we left the same is the 7. So I'm going to take this 7 and 7 times 5, and now 7 times 4, okay? So now I'm going to solve each one of these problems. I'm going to put parentheses around them. Parentheses mean do this first, okay? So 7 times 5, you know your 5's facts. Skip count by 5's. That equals 35. Fours are really easy. You can use your four song, or you could even use your seven song, okay? For this one, I might want to do my seven song. So seven, 14, 21, 28. There's your answer, 28. Okay, now that I've solved my two separate problems, the last thing I need to do is add those two numbers together. Because remember, even though we broke it apart, we've got to put it back together to find our total product. So 35 plus 28. I'm just going to do my work over here to solve that. In the ones, we have 5 plus 8, that's 13. And then in our tens, we have 1 plus 3 plus 2, and that's 6. So that means our total is 63. And that's how you use the distributive property to solve a multiplication problem.